Detroit, Michigan, the automotive capital of the world, announces a brand new experiment in cars, General Motors XP500, being assembled here for its public debut May 15th at the dedication of GM's new technical center. It's the first car ever powered by an engine that burns almost any type of fuel, even vegetable oil. With its plastic bubble canopy and other innovations, the body too is entirely new in concept. The small compact engine is also revolutionary in many ways. The inherent balance and precision of this principle practically eliminates vibration, and the relative absence of rotating parts prevents wear. As a free piston engine, it has no crankshaft or connecting rods, no rotating parts like conventional cars. Its pistons operate like a bicycle pump and blow hot gases to a turbine in the rear. The spinning turbine then powers the wheels. Although the free piston engine has been known more than 30 years, GM now puts it to work in an automobile. Engineers are also looking into its possibilities for trucks and buses. Only experimental now, just imagine filling her up with whale oil or peanut oil. Around a picturesque lake on the outskirts of Detroit, a fabulous new industrial development center is officially opened. GM's modernistic technical center. More than 5,000 distinguished guests, leaders in all fields from all over the nation, flock to this industrial campus to see GM President Harlow Curtis, arriving in the Firebird II, dedicate this monument to science. 330 acres, 25 buildings, for scientists to probe the secrets of their chosen fields. And now, the signal for the festivities to begin. Secretary Wilson, Board Chairman Bradley, and Mr. Curtis salute the flag. After the national anthem, the GM president takes the microphone to warn the nation in his dedicatory address that survival may depend on basic research. President Eisenhower followed Mr. Curtis on the closed network, describing the center as a launching place for new attacks on technological frontiers. Everything from motors to medicine is studied here. This is the electrostethograph, which records heart sounds too faint for a stethoscope. Here, an artificial lung, and a demonstration of the first successful mechanical heart. And unique studies of the blood. The sentry filmer sterilizes blood plasma and polio vaccine. In the story of styling, the passenger comes first. The entire car is built around him and her. The development of better automobiles for the public also help in principle to build better vehicles for the military, like this new T-101 90mm self-propelled anti-tank weapon. Built by GM, it's the first of a new line of weapons designed for use in fringe wars, where airborne troops would parachute into an area to stop a war before it starts. Another interesting exhibit is the flow table, where thousands of gallons of water rush by turbine blades to check flow patterns. The future itself is on display during the open house, for here the work of scientists, engineers, and technicians make the tech center a place where today meets tomorrow. Tomorrow. 